I'm delighted to let you know that this episode was recorded and brought to you from our great sponsors at the General Wine Company. For 30 years, the General Wine Company, international wine shippers, has been sourcing brilliant wines and spirits from around the world and delivering them right to your door. Whether you are a wine lover, a restaurant, hotel, or just having a party or holding a corporate event, the General Wine Company has the experience, the highest levels of excellent customer service and the range to offer you something special, whatever the budget or occasion. www.thegeneralwine.co.uk Hello indeed and welcome to Winescape TV. I am your host, Ditch Oakley, and we're very excited and indeed honoured uh, this afternoon to have with us uh, the wonderful and delightful Claudia Shug from the Shug Caneros Estate Wineries in California. Hello and thank you for joining us, Claudia. Thank you for having me. That's an absolute oh. pleasure. Now we're going to obviously be having uh, some wines to be trying uh, this afternoon. We're going to be uh, talking through two specifically. But before we do, we're going to obviously want to get a bit of a more of an idea uh, about the wineries themselves. So. Um, if I can just give a bit of background, uh, Walter, your great father, of course, uh, founded them in 1980. Tell me a bit more about the wineries. Um, well, my father founded the, the winery in 1980, um, was not a physical winery in 1980. He was making the wine while he was still the um, winemaker at Joseph Phelps. So when Joseph Phelps decided to discontinue Pinot Noir, he asked if he could continue with that variety and started producing it under his own label. Fantastic. So he... Um, finally made the, his own, uh, went on his own in 1983, and um, my mother joined in, and um, later on my brother joined in, and I'm doing the exports in Germany. Excellent. So, yeah. What do you think um, uh, makes, uh, the wines have often been described as uh, contemporary classics, what do you think sort of uh, are the main factors within that? Well, um, contemporary is probably associated with the fact that the grapes are from the New World, um, which is a nice expression, but um, we have um, a younger history in winemaking. Um, the grapes are getting nice, ripe, and full, and are aromatic. Um, classic probably is a good term to talk about how my father makes wine. Um, he was born and raised in the Rheingau of Germany. Um, he went to the Geisenheim University to study winemaking. His father was a winemaker. So he's bringing a lot of that old European um, know-how and also uh, handcrafted style of wine. So it's, it's his actually a goal to make wine in a very elegant and classic style. Fabulous. Now I, uh Obviously, there's going to be a slight German, as you say, influence because he spent time out there studying out there. I also hear that he spent some time uh, in England. Now, would that say? Would you say that there's any English influence in the wines at all? <laughs> uh, I don't think. So. I mean, I think it helped him his language skills, and he was filling wine in on the Thames, and when they were doing German wines, were being bottled Excellent. off of ships, and uh, that's what he was in charge of. So, sorry, there's absolutely no English influence whatsoever. No. no. <laughs> um, <laughs> and having yeah. been lucky enough to visit sort of California and sort of, yeah. you know all the sort of various wineries in the regions and Sonoma and uh, Napa, um, I understand the sort of the the anomaly, the uh, the geographic anomaly that is uh, the Petaluma Gap. But just for the sake of our, our beloved viewers, can you tell us a little bit more about the significance of the Petaluma Gap uh, with your wines? Um, well, it's actually what. We're more closer to the to the San Pablo Bay. The Petaluma Gap is up north of us. That's actually the Sonoma Coast region. Um, our winery is situated at the bottom of the Carneros region, and it's pretty close to the um, to the San Pablo Bay, which is the uh, the extension of the San Francisco Bay. So we get a lot of that. We get a lot of wind, and it does come through just similar to the Petaluma Gap, but it's coming from the other side. And we get fog that doesn't burn off till about ten or eleven o'clock, and it's that's usually in in the summertime. And that specifically so, helps things like the sort of the Pinot Noir grape yeah, variety, doesn't the it? Del delicate Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, the, the acid balance is um, guaranteed because we get ripe fruit, but we don't get the acid levels don't fall. Excellent. So we get nice acidity. Of course, we're going to look forward to trying a, a one of your Pinots, indeed, I believe a Chardonnay as well, uh, yes. uh, very very shortly. Um, Quick question on because of the uh, the sort of nature of, uh, of that sort of area, the, the wine making regions. Uh, specifically, you don't uh, do anything like sort of the classic prohibition favourite, the Zinfandel. Is there a reason for that, or is it just they they want to do a classic contemporary uh, look of the Pinot Noir? From from Shug, um, yep. um, naturally, my father had made pin, uh, Zinfandel at the other um, winery, but um, the focus definitely was for Pinot Noir. Like I said, he grew up in the Rheingau of Germany. His father was making Pinot Noir Spätburgunder on the Rheingau estate of Asmannshausen. And so he wanted to bring this whole heritage that he had to California. 
And that's why when he did finally make his own wine and make his own decisions to make what he wanted, Pinot Noir was at the top of his list. So that is the focus of the winery. Um, there's some excellent Zinfandel coming from the northern part of Sonoma where it's warmer, but um, this is really Pinot Noir country. Kind of. Oh, brilliant. Well, we're going to look forward to uh, opening up a bottle or two of that and, uh, and talking through them uh, with Claudia. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to say thank you very much, and we're just going to get some glasses ready and uh, pour some wine. See you shortly. Right now, there's been a flurry of corkscrews, and I'm very excited uh, that we're going to be trying uh, both a Chardonnay and a Pinot. Um, Claudia, I'm going to hold this up. That's, no, that's the no. wrong one indeed. This <laughs> one, yeah. That one's all. This is the Caneros. Um, Chardonnay and uh, Claudia, please tell me a little about it and so we can actually finally get to drink something. Oh, very good. Um, the Carneros Chardonnay is our flagship Chardonnay. Um, it's the, the middle one in our range. We have a Sonoma Coast Chardonnay and this is our Carneros. This is um, fermented um, in barrique and it's also um, aged on the lees after fermentation. And um, so it's a, it's a, far, uh, it's <laughs> Can we cut this? <laughs> just, just it's, it's, aged, it's aged sur lis and it, the lis is stirred, so it's a aged sur lis batonnage, it's a French method, and it gives the wine a little more creaminess, a little more viscosity. The nice thing about uh, the fact that we have a, a barrel fermented Chardonnay is that the barrel notes are very nicely integrated. Um, we don't use a lot of new barrel, we have about just 16% new French oak on this, uh, in this um, wine. So um, it's very elegant, it's very subtle, it's, um, but it's still there. It, it provides a nice complexity and nuttiness. Right, that's, cool. that's lovely. That's almost like a classic, classic sort of a Californian mm -hmm. style on the nose. No, I'm not going to spit that one out, I'm afraid to say, viewers. <laughs> I'm not either. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely delicious. It really, yeah. really is. Um, it's a, a really, really sort of classic style. Um, you're missing out, I have to say, because this is really quite something. Um, moving on now to the maybe sort of the Pinot Noir, if I may. Yeah. Um, this is one I've been waiting for to try for Can quite a while glass? now. Yes, let's get new glasses. Sorry, we'll get someone else to do the washing up for us. Okay, Marvelous. Good. There we go. <laughs> well, this is the Pinot. And this one we have. Yeah, and Pinot is... Again, this is the... Canaros Pinot Noir. Again, once again, Claudia, uh, over to you. Yeah. Talk us through it. Well, this is really the reason for being, as I said before, my father grew up on a Pinot Noir estate in Germany, and he wanted to really perfect Pinot Noir in California, and um, people did not really know where to grow it and didn't know how, how, to, how to handle the grape. Um, it's a very sensitive grape. It really reacts to most um, brutal force, so you really have to be gentle with it. And the place where we're growing it is called is Carneros and it's um, ideal for Pinot Noir. It really preserves the acidity, um, it, it brings out a very nice red cherry fruit um, and we age this wine in barrel. Um, we do do just French oak and 35% new. Right. So, um, and you say you get a lovely fog in the morning. Yeah. So sort of the right, keeps the, keeps keeps the, the grapes, grapes uh, from getting too cooked, too jammy. Fabulous. Yeah. Right, let's have a good go on this one. So a lovely clear bright colour. Mm. Smells exactly as it should. Mm. But tastes, dare I say it, even better. And I'm not going to be uh, spitting this one out either. That is absolutely yeah. delicious. And as you say, it has not too jammy because of that fog, which is unique to your particular area. That is absolutely fabulous. So you know, those are two brilliant wines from the Shug Canaros Estate Wineries. Um, I would like to thank uh, the rather delightful Claudia Shook for joining us uh, today and uh, talking us through the wines. Thank, Thank you very much indeed. It's been lovely to see you. Thank you for having um, me. And hopefully see you again soon, next time you're back in the country. Yeah, I'll be prepared. Excellent <laughs> stuff. But this has been Winescape TV and I'm Ditch Oakley and we'll be seeing you very, very soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>